Hi and welcome to another ideal calibration, how to calibrate your gas detector video. Today we're going to look at the gas alert ammonia, it's gas alert extreme ammonia unit from BW Technologies. It's a bit of an older unit, usually you'll see the solos out there, but this one's still in place, you'll see them around. Uh, I don't believe they're selling it anymore, not sure on that, but I don't believe they are. But, you know, you still see them, so let's take a look at how to calibrate them. Press and hold the power button to turn it on, over on the left. And you can see the date's a little screwy on this one. We got to put it in the dock and get all this fixed. But it'll show show you the date. Uh, it'll show you the times, and it'll show you your alarm values on startup. So while that's happening, let's get our regulators and everything set here. So first thing, you're going to need a cylinder of 50 parts per million ammonia mix with a nitrogen balance. That's the recommended mix from BW. And you got to check your expiration date. Uh, this is really important for ammonia. Ammonia reacts really easily with the cylinder wall, so that that expiration date is really important. So make sure if that's passed, that you go go get another cylinder. All right, next thing, the stainless steel regulator. So it's recommended you use stainless instead of nickel brass. So make sure when you're ordering it that you check that. And also, it's, this is a 1.0 liter per minute regulator. So they recommend this because ammonia, just the nature of it, it's just so reactive that even going through this length of tubing, you'll notice we keep this length of tubing very, very short as much as we can. Uh, but essentially what happens when it goes through there, it can kind of react with this, the wall on the side here. Uh, and it just takes a long time to get your monitor up. So they use a fast flow rate to push that through there quicker. So let's go ahead and open this regulator up. You always want to open it so that you don't get any of the moisture from the room air and lock it into the cylinder. You got to let it purge. Screw that in all the way. And now turn it off. And now let's put our really short length of tubing on. Uh, sometimes you'll see different types of tubing. This happens to be a Teflon line tubing, which is probably the best for it. Uh, the, with this short of a length, it really doesn't matter uh, that much. It's fine. You can use standard Tigon. Uh, but just make sure you keep that length short. Sometimes Teflon line can be a pain because it's hard to get it over the barbs like this. Uh, kind of got to stretch it or heat it to get it to work right. So anyway, here we go. To get into calibration mode, uh, you're going to need to press the down arrow and the blue button and hold them at the same time. So go ahead. It'll count. Go into cal mode. Now it's going to auto zero, and once it's done auto zeroing, it's going to ask us to put on the gas. There it goes. It's asking for 50 parts per million. We're not going to go up and down. We're just going to put the gas on there, and we're going to press the button here to confirm it. Now turn your gas on. So that beep means it's recognizing that it has the gas on there. So now it's trying to do the cal. So one thing about this monitor, you'll notice the calibration takes a much longer time than it does on, say, a carbon monoxide sensor or a hydrogen sulfide sensor. And that's just because the electrochemical cell in this is a lot slower than the ones that are in use on those. It just reacts to the gas slower. So uh, essentially it has a different T90 time. And T90 is the time it takes the unit here to see 90% of what's in the atmosphere. So usually that's pretty quick. This one takes a little longer, um, but cal time is probably about twice what it is for one of the other sensors out there. So I'm going to fast forward this through you so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. But essentially we're just waiting for this to get towards 50 and it'll let us know once we're close. Okay, there we go. It's saying Cal do. It's going to say 180 days. So we're done with the Cal. Let's turn the gas off. And let's pop the adapter off there. And we can put that off to the side. And now it's going to go through and confirm the values on the alarms. And you can change these at this time if you want by using the up and down arrows. Uh, we just want to get through the menus though. So you're going to press this button to acknowledge. And you can get through these a little bit quicker. Otherwise, you have to wait for it to time out. Perfect. So there it goes. It's going to come up in alarm mode. I'm just going to wait for this to come down. 
What's happening right now is the sensor inside here is eating up that gas. It has to essentially metabolize it and digest it uh, to put out the signal. So that takes a certain amount of time. And just like it was slow to go up, it's a little bit slow to come down. So even though there's no gas on here, it's still taking its time to come down right now because it still has gas trapped inside the sensor there. So we're going to wait for this to come down all the way down to zero. And then I'm going to show you how to perform a bump test on this unit. So now we're down to zero, let's take a look at doing a bump test. So what we're going to do is called a qualification bump test, and we're just going to be checking, making sure that the sensor is going up towards its intended value, that the alarm horn, vibrating alarm, and strobes are flashing, and that everything's going off, uh, and then we're going to be recording that data. So I, I've got a form I'm going to walk you through once we go through the bump test, and but for now, let's get started here. So take your cylinder, and all we have to be is in normal reading mode. Attach this to the front, clip that on, and now you just turn your gas on. And you shouldn't have to leave it on long, but it should go up quick, quickly enough. And we're just waiting for it to start sending off the alarms. So this alarm, the first one is set at 25. So you can see the sensor is behaving properly, it's going up. And there it goes, hit 25. Okay, so see the strobes, I can feel the vibrating alarm, and I can hear the horn. We're good to go. Turn off the gas, take off the calibration adapter, put that aside, and then we'll wait for this to go back down. Okay, so that was a successful bump test. So now, next step that we should go through is recording that. Uh, you can get a copy of this sheet from us. Just send us an email to support at idealcalibrations.com or leave a comment and I'm going to go through what we've got on here. So first thing is just what's the model. So this is the Honeywell BW Extreme NH3. Put your serial number. The calibration gas values from your cylinder. So this is 50 parts per million. And then the calibration gas expiration date. It's good to have this on here just because if it gets close you're going to want to reorder. Uh, then here's the calibration gas lot number. That's good to have for records just in case there's ever a problem, anything goes wrong with that monitor, you want to have this data. Uh, so you need to have this available to you. If you have a docking station, it does this automatically. You don't have to worry about it so much. Uh, but if you don't have that as part of your safety program, you really need a bump sheet uh, for your guys. And they should be bump testing every day before they go into the field. And that's a recommendation from us and uh, from BW. So we will put today's date here. Uh, so today is the 2 slash, I think it's the 15th, so we're going to say that, 21. Uh, audible alarms worked, check. Visual alarms, check. Vibrating, check. Sensor's working, meaning we saw it go up towards its intended value. Cylinder pressure greater than 100 PSI, check. We're around 600. And was this a bump or a calibration? Bump. And initial it, JM. And then if there was any notes, you would use notes for sensor had a problem, sensor was slow, uh, ordered cal gas, anything like that. Okay? And that's a bump test, and that's how to fill out the paperwork. If you have any questions on any of this, feel free to give me a call here. Uh, number is 734-956-0539, and you can send us an email to support at idealcalibrations.com. We'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, feel, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we'd appreciate it. It helps get our numbers up. And thank you much. You guys have a great day, and stay safe out there.